Hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining us today. We will wait a couple of minutes for the attendees to join, and then we will start with the webinar. Thank you. Perfect. So let's start. Uh, once again, hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar with Muscat Canada uh, University. And today we're going to have an informational session about design and creativity. My name is Karen Botero and I am pleased to be here with you once again, hosting this webinar on representing Viva Mundo. So in Viva Mundo, we tell you all you need um, to start the process of studying abroad. So we invite you to read all our articles and find all kinds of, of information um, about it. So today we are joined by Maria Ortega, a, a recruitment officer at NASCAD University, and she will be talking about design and creativity. So we hope you all enjoy this presentation. And of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to um, ask on the Q&A box here at the bottom of the screen. And we will go back to them at the end of the presentation. Now, I would like to give the floor to Maria. Thank you, Karen. Um, well, hello everyone. And welcome to the webinar about NASCAD University. So I'm going to start with a little video uh, to give you guys a sense of what life at NASCAD is like. So here we go.
So I hope everyone enjoyed that video and got a good um, taste of what life at NASCAD is like. Uh, so once again, uh, hi everyone, welcome to NASCAD University. So NASCAD was founded in 1887 by Anna Leon Owens as the Victoria School of Art and Design. NASCAD is actually the first degree granting art school in Canada. Its facilities count with the only art and design library in Atlantic Canada and over five different gallery spaces for students to showcase their work, as well as 24 seven studio access for most of our studios. One of its most attractive features is a wide array of equipment that students have access to, from 3D printers, 3D filming gear, to VR equipment and six feet tall kilns. All of our facilities, oh, sorry, all of our faculty are working artists who are actively exhibiting or publishing their work. Our university is spread in three buildings sprinkled in the downtown core of the city, all within 10 to 15 minutes walking of each other. So I would like to take a moment and begin to acknowledging that NASCAD is located in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which Mi'kmaq, Maliseed, and Passamaquoddy peoples first signed with the British crown in 17. 26. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Malasi title and established the rules for what was to be ongoing relationship between nations. So what you see on this slide here is actually the Mi'kmaq flag. So some of you who are joining us from abroad might not be familiar with this. I certainly wasn't either. And at first I wasn't sure of the importance of it, just simply saying some words. But these words carry weight and importance. They are the first step of a long path ahead of us. I believe that we need to understand our past to build a better future and it starts by acknowledging. So our city, which as I mentioned is situated in Mi'kmaq land. Our city is Halifax, which is the capital of the province of Nova Scotia. It's an Atlantic province. It's also commonly known as Chibuktuk, which is the Mi'kmaq word for Halifax. Halifax, as I said, the capital of Nova Scotia is sitting right by the Atlantic Ocean with one of the largest natural harbors in the world, making it the hub of business in the Maritimes. Nova Scotia is Canada's education capital with faculty and students that come from over hundred countries to work and study in both English and French. While being the biggest city east of Montreal, it still keeps a strong community culture, having a huge arts community draw. Nova Scotia is a great province to immigrate to with region specific immigration programs, as well as a healthy and growing international population. Halifax is a university city with over eight schools. This facilitates off campus studies, providing easy access to courses in other schools. So, our university is spread in three different buildings. The first building, which is the one you see here uh, on the bottom right hand corner. I know it looks like several <laughs> different buildings, but the whole top of it is actually NASCA. You also see it here in my background. <laughs> so this is the Fountain Campus, which is considered NASCA's main building. It's housed in a 19th century market block. So it's 19 adjoining commercial buildings. Again, that's why it looks like several different buildings, but that's all NASCA. It has shops at street level and studios and classrooms above. This is where programs such as jewelry, painting, photo, printmaking, textiles, fashion, and other have, have their studios. You also can find the library, the student lounge, learning commons, student union, and our auditorium here. Our Office of Student Experience, Finance, Admissions, us are also located in this building. Viana, our own art gallery, is strategically housed at street level, showing exclusively student work with openings every Monday. Our second building, the Port Campus, which you see on the image here on the left. This is perched on Halifax waterfront with boasting uninterrupted views of the harbor from its glass curtain seawall, which is on the other side of the building. You can see um, on the right hand side an image there um, of what it will look like on the other side with all the windows. It's, it's pretty magical. <laughs> so the Port Campus is a renovated historic warehouse repurposed specifically for art education and production. 
In addition to the many first year classes and studios that are held at the port, the three story steel and concrete structure houses the school's most, more industrial art, design and craft practices. With wood and metal fabrica fabrication shops, sculpture studio, plastics lab and foundry. The Port Loggia Gallery and Treaty Space Gallery on the first floor expands NASCAT's exhibition programming. So our last building, the third building, the Academy Building, which you can see here on the biggest image. This is located in a Gothic Revival brick building built in 1878 as a high school. The Academy campus is home to the Media Arts Division and has specialty facilities, including edit suites, film studios, sound recording facilities, screening rooms, and animation studios. All of our three campuses are located in the heart of downtown. So as I said, they're all within 10 to 15 minutes of each other. It is important to know that because they're not right next to each other, we don't offer on-campus residence. However, we do partner with the other universities in the city to offer student residence. Schools like St. Mary's, Dalhousie, and King's are within walking distance or a short bus right away. So our programs, um, and this will be the heavier slide uh, where I'm gonna talk about all of our wonderful and exciting programs. <laughs> so NASCA offers three undergrad degrees, 10 majors, 12 minors, three masters, and three certificate programs. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each program. The first one being the Bachelor of Arts with a major in art history, uh, which can be taken with a studio component, giving the, studio, the student the opportunity to not only be involved in the critical analysis of art, but also the making of it. So this is up to the student if they only want to take art history without any actual practice of art, or if they actually want to practice art along with their degree. Uh, then the Bachelor of Design with a major in interdisciplinary design, which is also very unique in its field. The interdisciplinary approach provides the student a wider knowledge of design practices while building a solid foundation of the design process. Then our Bachelor of Fine Arts, which offers eight different majors that can be combined with any of our minors. So this is our biggest program basically because it has the most amount of majors. So the first major will be our major in ceramics, in which you will study vessel, sculptural, and architectural ceramics, and examine the relationship between design, materials, color, process, and techniques. Major in expanded media, which offers students the opportunity to explore interdisciplinary practices, collaboration and research, and conceptual and social issues in a range of media arts, including film, video, installation, performance, audio art, digital media, electronics, animation, and photography. You don't have to do all of those. Those are just the different options that you have um, to be engaged on under this uh, specific major of expanded media. And then we have major in film, which offers you an opportunity to explore the practice, history, theory, and analysis of film, pr film production and film art with an emphasis on collaboration and innovation. Then major in fine arts, which includes drawing, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. So it's four different disciplines under one major. Um, and this gives the student uh, the opportunity of a variety of different approaches of art making, and they can also merge them if they want. So have pieces that include some drawing, some printmaking, some sculpture. We, we give the student the uh, biggest um, range of possibilities so they can create different work. Then our major in interdisciplinary arts, which allows you to explore a diverse range of visual arts interests from an interdisciplinary approach during studio classes, such as language into art, idea, process, and media landscapes. So a lot of students usually get confused with fine arts and interdisciplinary arts. So just to take a moment here to differentiate the two, the fine arts major is basically restricted to the four practices that I just mentioned, which is drawing, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. Whereas if you go with interdisciplinary arts, you can expand beyond that. So you can create work um, that pulls from all the different di disciplines that we have. So you have basically a broader uh, 
freedom to explore different things. So if you want to work with a little bit of photo or a little bit of film or jewelry, you can take courses in all these different um, disciplines and then just bring them together to create art. So moving on to our jewelry design and metal smithing major, this offers a broadly based metals education, including studies of art jewelry, hollowware, product design, and metal business practice. Our major in photography, which enables students to examine the technical, historical, and theoretical issues related to contemporary photography, while engaging expertise in conventional, digital, and hybrid methods of image making. Students will develop their own artistic practice and gain a critical understanding of the aesthetic and social discourses within photography. So we have the option for uh, the students to take digital photography. Obviously, the most common will have a, a smartphone with a camera or um, analog photography. So we also have facilities where you can develop film and print those images as well, which is very exciting. Uh, then moving on to your major in textiles and fashion. This offers students the opportunity to explore the diverse field of textiles and fashion, which encompasses art, science, and technology. The program integrates three key areas of research, which is structure, surface, and form. This unique approach to textiles education balances conceptual concerns with the technical and design skills required to understand the textile traditions of weaving, dye, and print and garment making. Students will examine the relationship between materials, processes, and the maker, as well as the critical role that textiles and fashion have played in cultures, with a focus on sustainable and organic materials and techniques. The program maintains handcraft values and incorporates appropriate uh, digital methodologies. So I'm not really gonna touch on the minors, but uh, probably as you guys can see, most of the majors can also be taken as a minor. Uh, so basically, if you are going into a major of film, uh, but you're also interested in learning specifically about ceramics, your uh, degree would be Bachelor of Fine Arts with a major in film and minor in ceramics. The minors are optional. It's up to the student if they wanna expand their knowledge in a specific practice. It's not something that's mandatory. So moving on to our foundation year. So the foundation year is the first year of um, all of our undergraduate degrees. So basically when you apply for our undergraduate degrees, you are applying for foundation, the foundation program. This year begins with two semester um, of foundation studies and it just gives the opportunity to level all of our students because we do get students who have, you know, a lot of art practice from high school or students who are just starting to discover art. So this gives us the opportunity to put them all at the same level. So once they go on to their specific program, um, they all have more or less the same skills. It also gives the students the opportunity to either further develop skills that they may have, such as drawing or painting or photo making and gain new skills that they can then bring on to their practice. So in foundation, uh, you will learn about the vocabulary of visual art, how to give and receive critical feedback. This is very important. So the dynamic on an art school is very different than what you may imagine at another program. Um, there's a lot of critique that you have to give and receive, and that takes a certain amount of practice and getting used to. So it's important to go through foundation year to prepare you to have the right tools and vocabulary to give this feedback to have a critical eye and also be able to receive it and build upon that. You're also going to learn about observational drawing. So drawing is a mandatory course during the foundation year. Color theory, composition, 2D and 3D design, academic writing and analytical skills and visual culture studies. So basically giving you a foundation, um, of course, whole foundation year to build upon once you go on to more specific courses for your program. So um, talking about other opportunities that students have, we also have an exchange program. Uh, we have agreements with over 100 institutions all over the world. So this is only available for students on third and fourth year. So once you reach that level, if you're interested in going abroad, um, it's a matter of finding a program that can 
And it's also up to the student if they want to do the semester abroad for credit or not. So you do have the possibility of being enrolled at another institution, take courses there for a semester, and then come back to NASCA and um, resume your studies where you would have been. Uh, so you will gain those credits and bring them back to your degree. You can also kind of pause your degree, take the semester abroad and come back and pick up where you were left. Uh, we also have access to gallery space to exhibit your work. As I said, we have gallery space in our Fountain Campus and our Port Campus. So students get plenty of opportunities and resources to exhibit that work, which is very important once they come out of their degree to have this in their resume to say that they've been, they've, they've had exposure to galleries. We also have a NASCAP fashion show. We actually have two. We have the wearable art show, which is open to all the students uh, in the school. So it's a little bit more abstract, more conceptual. And then the actual fashion show, which is for our fashion and textile students only. And this is a great opportunity for the students because it gives them basically um, international and domestic uh, exposure. So we do have people who actually fly into Halifax for this show. And there's a lot of networking that happens during that week. And we also have a visiting status at local universities. So as I mentioned, actually Halifax and, and Nova Scotia is the university capital of the country. So we have plenty of post-secondary institutions. So say if you're interested in taking courses that are not offered at NASCA, like language courses or psychology or any other type of field of study, you can do that as a visiting student at another institution. These courses would just take the place of your electives and then you can bring those credits back onto your degree. Uh, just to be clear, you would be uh, working towards a NASCA degree, wouldn't be a degree from another institution. So I'm going to touch on uh, a little bit of alumni because I do know that a lot of people have the question of, you know, what do I do with a degree in arts or design? Um, this always comes up. So I'm just going to pull different examples from alumni from different uh, majors and programs so you guys get a broader sense of what you could do. Um, one thing we do always say to our students or pr prospective students is that a degree in art is not something that will lead you to, towards a specific path. Like for example, if you study law, you're going to be a lawyer. Um, an art degree offers a broad range of opportunities. So it's really just a tool that the person has to build a specific path. It's just up to them to decide what that path will look like. So I'll get started. And yes, those are all just screenshots from uh, Instagram. So these are people that <clears throat> came to NASCA, earned a degree, and these are their accounts. So that's also a way that you guys can take note of it and follow them if you're interested in any of this work. So I'll start with Akshay. This person, uh, their name is Akshay Tiagi. Uh, he is originally from Mumbai, as you can see here on their account. Uh, they came to NASCAD for a Bachelor of Fine Arts with a major in fashion and textiles. And then they went on, instead of actually producing garments, they're more interested in styling. So that's what they, they went back to India with this degree and they have worked for different brands like Louis Vuitton and Vogue. Um, they are styling Bollywood celebrities as well. And they're actually coming back next year for a Master of Fine Arts. Then we have this brand. Um, these are actually two sisters, uh, Chloe and Paris. Uh, they, one took fashion and textile, the other one took jewelry. They have actually been mentioned in Forbes 30 under 30 in 2017. They have won several awards. They have dressed celebrities like Lady Gaga, and they have this brand that established in Toronto. And they've actually participated in the Toronto uh, Fashion Week. Um, so yeah, again, they took, they both took these two different disciplines. They came together, created this brand and are just doing wonderfully now. So Jillian McLeod, um, this person, she graduated in 2003. Uh, she took a Bachelor of Design and then she went on to work for O Magazine, Elle, and the New York Times. Uh, she has mainly focused on hand type. So it's just typefaces that are hand created. Uh, she's currently a designer for O Magazine, actually. That's a magazine that Oprah uh, runs, I guess. <laughs> then uh, Steve McNeven. 
So as you can see here, uh, he's a, a comic artist and he works for um, Marvel doing a lot of the pencil work. He's a comic book artist. He graduated in 1989, so he's a more senior alumni. And he has worked on, uh, for example, Knights 4, Ultimate Secret, and the New Avengers. So now moving on to how to apply now that you are hopefully all excited to apply to NASCAD. So it all happens through our website, which is there, my.nascad.ca. Um, basically, in broad strokes, what you're going to need is a copy of your most recent transcripts, an admissions essay, it doesn't have to be very long or, or in-depth, a uh, one page or two pages, more than fine. You just need to talk about yourself, why you're interested in art, and why do you want to come to NASCAD. Uh, uh, the portfolio and sketchbook, this is one of the most important pieces of your application. So the portfolio submission, you can see here, there's quite a, a long list of different uh, creative outlets, we could say. So basically what we wanna see for your portfolio submission is that uh, you have worked in three different mediums. This list is a list of those possibilities, but it really expands way beyond that. Um, this is just to get the wheels turning about the different mediums that you can work on. So basically anything that's considered a creative outlet and can produce a piece of artistic work, you can use as a portfolio submission. And then finally, the application fee, which is $70 Canadian. And that's basically the end of my presentation. Uh, if you wish to reach out to us, the main email, which is here, admissions at nasca.ca. We have our manager of admissions and recruitment, Rosak. Uh, then myself and Kizzy are recruitment officers. So you can reach any of us at any time with any questions. There's also a little sticky note there mentioning a portfolio preparation course. So if you're someone who's interested in art and is interested in applying but has never had any exposure to art or art courses, you can take this course. It's actually online. It's always been online, pre-pandemic even. <laughs> so if you want to build a portfolio, this is um, a course that is specifically for that, for you to have different exercises where you're going to be building a portfolio, hopefully to apply to an art school. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, so Karen, if we're ready to jump on to q and I think we have a healthy amount of time for that. Well, perfect. Thank you very much, Maria, for your presentation. Uh, it was really good and it was really interesting for all of us. Um, now we are going to start uh, the Q with the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, please ask on the Q&A box here at the bottom of the screen and we will um, answer them uh, shortly. Uh, we are going to be um answering questions in english and in spanish so if you have any questions just there and and ask all kinds of thoughts that you may have okay so we have one question here to start off with which is how can i apply to the master of fine arts Okay, well, thank you, Karen. I think you did put a link. Did we share a list? Um, yeah, so there's a link um, in the chat, uh, which directs you again to, we, we have two websites, uh, just to clarify that, because I know it can get confusing. We have our main website, which is nasca.ca. Uh, in nasca.ca, you'll find all the information about our programs. So it's just general information about the school. But if you want to apply, if you consider yourself an applicant, you would go to my.nascat.ca. Um, as I said, I believe that Karen uh, has shared a link uh, to that website. And in that website, you can find all the requisites to apply to our master programs. Perfect. Thank you very much. We have one question related to it, but it is in Spanish. So uh, I'll read it right now. It says, Um, ¿Puedo aplicar ahora a un programa si quiero estudiar el próximo año? ¿Un, un programa eh, undergraduate o graduate? Eh, a, no nos especifican, no, pero podríamos responderla dirigida a las dos. Um, 
Sí, en este momento, bueno, en este momento no, aún no estamos aceptando aplicaciones para lo que sería Fall 2022, este, pero sí estamos aceptando aplicaciones para el semestre que empieza en enero. Este, pero si quieres empezar en enero, eh, nada más aceptamos aplicaciones para programas de licenciatura, a nivel de licenciatura, no a nivel de maestría. Para nivel de maestría, nada más se puede empezar en, en lo que es otoño o septiembre del 2022. Great. Thank you very much. Um, aquí nos están preguntando cuáles son las tasas de matrícula eh, de los programas y eh, supongo que para complementarla varían dependiendo de eh, los programas de pregrado y los programas de grado. Uh -huh. Sí, eh, es un monto para programas de pregrado y es otro monto para programas de, de posgrado. Creo que también compartiste el enlace en el chat este, sí, que tiene el desglose de, de lo que costaría la matrícula. El costo de la matrícula, básicamente lo, lo único que hace que varía es dependiendo en la cantidad de cursos en los que el estudiante esté inscrito. Entonces se cobra por curso. Si estás tomando un curso es un monto, dos cursos sería el doble, obviamente de tres cursos sería más y así sucesivamente. Perfecto. Um... Tenemos por acá otra pregunta que dice, ¿ofrecen programas de maestría en mercadeo? No, nada más tenemos en arte, diseño y um, educación de arte. Ok, perfecto. Eh, acabamos de, de poner de nuevo el enlace de eh, las tasas de matrícula para las personas que no hayan tenido la oportunidad de verlo. Y tenemos una pregunta relacionada con este enlace. Dice, are there scholarships available for international students? Right, we, so we do have scholarships, entrance scholarships available uh, both at the undergraduate and graduate level uh, for international students. Um, so There, that's one option of getting financial aid. Um, additionally, once you are accepted and you become a student, we have something that's called grants and or bursaries. They work the same as a scholarship. Uh, it's just money that goes towards your tuition, but you have to apply to them individually. So this, the entrance scholarship is something that you will get just with your application should you have a successful application. You don't have to do anything separate for it. Uh, but then once you become a student, if you want to continue to get financial aid, you have to seek for it. So you have to make sure that each semester you check what's available for grants and bursaries and you apply to them. Um, it's very easy to apply. Um, it's just a matter of you deciding what you can qualify for. And then it's basically, I believe, a small essay, um, probably your transcripts. Perfect. Thank you very much, Maria. Um, we have a question from Elena. She's from Mexico and she says, can you apply to a master's degree with a government scholarship from my country? Um, yeah, that, I mean, it, it's just a matter of, you know, this, your government um, arranging the payment to the university, but it doesn't really matter where the money comes from. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, He says, do you offer internship, internship programs? Um, so we don't really have internship programs for undergraduate. We have certain co-op opportunities that come up. Uh, we don't say that we have, you know, like established thing per se, because it varies from program to program. You know, if you're in film, there's different opportunities that if you're in fashion and textiles, It also vary per semester. And there's just nothing that uh, it's solid and happens firmly each semester. However, there are more internship opportunities at the graduate level. Great, thank you very much. We have a couple, we have a couple of questions about languages. So the first one says, um, do I have to know French? Tengo que saber francés y debo certificar mi nivel de inglés para poder aplicar. No, francés no es un requisito. Este, toda la educación que, que se da en NASCAR es en inglés. 
Eh, y para el idioma en inglés, eh, si hay un requisito, déjame buscar el enlace. Uh, pues bien sea presentar, hay que presentar alguna prueba de que tienes este manejo del idioma, si no es tu primer idioma, claro. Y hay diferentes maneras, puede ser a través del IELTS, del TOEFL, del CELPIC. Um, el enlace que puse en el chat tiene um, toda la información de las diferentes eh, notas que se necesita de acuerdo al examen de inglés. Ok, perfecto. Um, we have another question that says, does the university offer advice in terms of visa application? No. Eso es a través de un agente de inmigración. Ok, perfecto. Muchas gracias. Ahora, tenemos algunas preguntas relacionadas con oportunidades eh, laborales después de la graduación. Entonces, eh, te voy comentando. La primera dice, ¿existe la posibilidad de iniciar una carrera profesional en Canadá después de la graduación? Esa, esa es una, una de las preguntas difíciles. Este, es básicamente un poco la respuesta que, que había dado cuando estaba hablando de los alumni. Eh, la posibilidad existe, pero como, como había mencionado, un título en arte o en diseño abre muchas posibilidades, eh, más que un título que es más específico como de medicina o de, o de derecho. Entonces sí, hay posibilidades, depende del estudiante cómo quiere implementar ese título. Ok, perfecto. Muchas gracias. Eh, tenemos otra relacionada que dice, eh, 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 mm, bueno, relacionada con, con toda la parte de alumni, dice, ¿puedo seguir en contacto con la universidad después de graduarme? Sí, y tenemos eh, un alumni relations, eh, una organización, eh, si se quieren suscribir. Great, thank you. Eh, te, la siguiente pregunta dice, Can I get into the Canadian art industry with help with the help of uh, NASCAP? Well, uh, I mean, if if it's if they're talking about like the Canadian art workforce, um, mm -hmm. that that's um, a more complicated question. I mean, the faculty here are always happy to make connections and do, and do networking for the students. You know, if they see a student um, that could be good for a job that they already know of, they, they'll be happy to make that connection. So we do have faculty that are happy to facilitate things for students, but we don't have like an established program uh, for that, for, for students to like move on to the workforce or the, the art community after they're done with their degree. Ok, muchas gracias. Eh, sí, tienes razón, digamos que toda esta parte del networking ha sido una pregunta bien recurrente mm -hmm. eh, durante este seminario. De hecho, tenemos otra que dice, ¿tienen oportunidades para el networking? Y si es el caso, ¿cómo, eh, digamos, se presentan esas oportunidades para los estudiantes internacionales? Ya, yeah. eh, las oportunidades de networking realmente no diferencian tampoco si eres internacional o doméstico, son oportunidades que están abiertas para todo el mundo. Por ejemplo, una de las oportunidades que hay es lo que había mencionado, de que una de las galerías, la galería principal que se llama Diana, que está en, en este edificio, tiene exhibiciones diferentes todas las semanas. Entonces, cada semana se exhibe trabajo de estudiantes diferentes. Esto da más oportunidades para que los estudiantes puedan exhibir su trabajo. Si tú decides que quieres exhibir tu trabajo en la galería, esa es una excelente oportunidad para networking, porque todos los lunes hay una apertura de galería y vienen diferentes personas a ver el trabajo. Este, por ejemplo, para estudiantes que están en fashion, en textiles, como había dicho, hay un fashion show. Esa es una oportunidad maravillosa para networking porque incluso viene gente de Toronto y de otras partes del país a ver este fashion show, a ver lo que los estudiantes aquí están creando. Entonces, sí, hay diferentes oportunidades, simplemente varía de acuerdo al programa en el que el, el alumno está inscrito. Ok, muchas gracias. Um... Nuestra siguiente pregunta dice, can I take um, a hybrid program, start online and finish it in person? 
Uh, so right now, um, yes and no. Uh, we do have some courses that are happening online. Um, some of them are at the undergraduate level. So should you apply and be accepted, you can start taking courses online. For example, we have students that for this uh, coming fall semester, they're gonna take a few courses online and then in the winter, they're gonna take courses in person. However, keep in mind that the availability of online courses is way lower than the availability of in-person courses, just for the nature of the programs. You know, a lot of the programs are studio-based really all of the programs are studio based. So it requires the student to be on campus and have access to all the facilities that we have in order to be successful in the courses. So technically, yes, you just have to know that little caveat that like you're not going to be able to enroll in a lot of other courses that the availability will be um, quite limited. Great. Um, we have one question. I think this one is related to the last one. It says, how is the situation in the university due to the COVID-19? Would I mean, will it be like, um, like a barrier for them to apply or for them to get there? So applying, we don't ask any questions regarding the pandemic. Uh, however, uh, one, the situation is ever changing and evolving. So what I say now may change for next semester or may change even next month. So right now, again, it may change. Um, if you are a student who apply and was accepted and you're coming to campus on the, this fall, um, there are certain requirements. You are required to wear a mask. Um, if you are not if you don't have both vaccines, you have to get tested every week and show proof that you have a negative COVID test. So that's the situation right now if you want to be on campus. But again, it may change. Well, thank you. That's pretty much interesting. So uh, we have two more questions. Um, this one says, ¿Cuál es el costo de vida en promedio para un estudiante internacional en Canadá? Sin contar lo que es la matrícula. Mira, al mes eh, aproximadamente dos mil dólares canadienses, contando la renta, eh, mercado, transporte, entretenimiento, materiales eh, para la, los cursos. $1,500 a $2,000 al mes. Ok, gracias. Y la última pregunta que tenemos me llamó mucho la atención porque eh, llegó justo cuando estabas diciendo lo del curso de, de, de la creación del portafolio. Dice, ¿any advice on how to create my portfolio? Hmm. Yeah, we, we do get a lot of questions about portfolios. Um, I mean, it's, it's understandable that this is something that, you know, creates a lot of anxiety um, and different schools are looking for different things. Um, one advice I would give, actually, I think I have more than one because I've seen a lot of different portfolios. Uh, try to think outside of the box. Um, we do get a lot of students who do your typical, you know, drawing an eye, drawing a hand or like body parts. We see a lot of that. What we want to see and what we're interested on is on conceptual art. So something beyond just um, drawing from an observation. This opens uh, the door for more creativity to happen um, for the viewer, which would be the admissions committee to get to know the student at a more intimate level. So stray away from your typical submission of body parts and the second one would be what I talked about of working in different mediums. So these two go hand in hand because again, you know, when students um, start to dabble in art, they turn to observational drawing and there's a lot of drawing, you know, so we want to see things outside of that. So again, we're very, very flexible with what we accept. We have, you know, we've seen collages, we've seen people uh, we have a fashion program, so we've seen students uh, create garments out of things that are not actual fabric. So creating garments out of paper, out of found objects, and that's very interesting to see, seeing the student think outside of the box. 
So that's the main thing. It's just, you know, think outside of the box and outside of your comfort zone. Okay, that was our last question. Thank you very much, Mar very much Maria, for your advice. So if any of our attendees have, e have any other questions, please feel free to send um, all your questions via email to Maria. I don't know, Maria, if you can share your email with us through the chat. Um, um, that's it. And I think that will be the end of our webinar. Uh, any last um, word you want to say, Maria, about this um, presentation? No pressure. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, yeah, as you said, you know, if you guys have any questions, whatever it may be, however small it may be, just don't hesitate to send me an, e an email, uh, obviously in Spanish, English, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so yeah, and just get creative. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you very much. So as I say, that will be the end of our webinar. And uh, we invite to all the, all the people registered in this webinar and all the people who are watching us in our Facebook Live to visit the Nazca University website. And of course, the Viva Mundo website if you want to find um, more information about studies abroad. Once again, thank you very much for your brilliant presentation. And thank you to our attendees for listening. Thank you, Karen, and thank you everyone for attending. Bye.